What's up everyone? In this video, I'm talking about the Moment M5. It's a five and a half inch budget friendly field monitor for the Panasonic GH5 or really any other camera that you might be using as long as it has an HDMI port. If you're new here, my name is Caleb and I've been doing freelance video production since 2012, but this channel is to help you make your own videos, whether you just started or you've been making them for a while, whether you use the GH5 or any other camera, if that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I totally wanted to shoot this whole video while being outside. I even had some of the talking parts filmed and some of the B-roll filmed, but after being out there for a while, it was just too cold. But also, even though the GH5 is a weather sealed camera, a lot of the gear that I was using out there is not weather sealed. So I thought maybe the best thing to do would be to come back into the studio and talk about the M5 here and do some of the demonstration stuff inside the studio so that some of my gear didn't freeze. But I will say the M5 did survive while I was out there. There's a couple things that I look for when it comes to filmmaking gear. And the first is that I need it to be easy to use. I need it to be quick to set up and I can't spend a lot of time messing with it because I need to get shooting almost as soon as I turn the camera on. The second is that I just need the piece of gear to do what it's made to do. So if it's a monitor, I just need it to monitor my image. And if it has some of these extra bells and whistles, that's a bonus. So the Moment M5 is one of those pieces of gear that that it does what it's supposed to do. But it also has some of those extra things to enhance your filming experience, like the waveform, focus peaking, and the ability to add your own LUTs to the image. So I did a live stream not too long ago where I actually unboxed the Moment M5. There you can see everything that comes in the package, which you can get around for $180. And if you wanna check out that live stream, I've got it right up here. But real quick, I'll just run through everything that you get in the package when you receive the Moment M5. First of all, it comes in this pouch, which you can fit everything in and then you can fit this into a camera bag or use a carabiner to strap it to a bag. And then in there you will find the actual M5 five and a half inch monitor, a very nicely designed hot shoe or cold shoe mount. One of my favorite things is the sun hood, micro and mini HDMI cords, some reading material, an SD card to load your LUTs. It's 128 megabytes, which isn't gonna hold much, but it will hold those LUTs. A little cleaning towel, another Allen wrench. Then you also have this power cord in case you wanna tap into like a V mount battery or something like that. All right, so the actual monitor is a plastic shell with a touch screen, which you can turn on and off with the power button right on the top up here. The M5 can be powered by MP or E-style batteries, or you can power it with like a V-mount battery with the power cord that was provided. Then the other ports along the side here are gonna be the HDMI in, which you're gonna primarily use coming from the camera, and then the HDMI out if you wanna go out to another monitor. Then along the sides, you have two mounting options, one on the side and one on the bottom, which I have this mount in right now. Then from the bottom, you can also power out from the monitor. Then you also have the headphone jack in case you need to monitor your audio. Then right on this other side, you have the SD card slot for loading your LUTs onto the monitor if you choose to monitor with LUTs. Now, I did not notice much fan noise when I was using this, but along the back here, you do have vents along this whole back side of the monitor. All right, so I have the Moment M5 powered up and I actually have my studio shot going into the Moment M5. So here you can see that I actually have the focus peaking on. So you can tell that, you know, I have red all over here. I turned the focus peaking on and turned it to red because I was shooting outside earlier and being outside, it helps tremendously to have focus peaking on, especially on a 500 nit monitor like this. Now, if you compare that to like the Ninja 5, that's a thousand nit monitor. So that's just gonna be the brightness level of the monitor. And 500 nits is not super bright. So thankfully they include that sun hood where you can kind of protect the monitor a little bit from that sunlight. Now you can tell that there is a little bit of a lag. So when I'm talking, you can see that I'm just a little bit behind in that. Now this could be an issue if you have like a focus puller or something like that, but if you're on your own and you're filmmaking on your own, that might not be a huge issue for you. So this is a touch screen monitor. So to get to the menu, you can just double tap right on the screen there. And then here you have your different 
tools like your exposure assist tools. So you have false color, zebra, histogram, the waveform monitor, vector scope. All of these things are huge deals when it comes to making sure your exposure is set right, especially the waveform. I love using the waveform. The GH5 has the waveform built in, but if you can get it on a bigger screen to where you can see it, that really, really helps. So you have all your exposure assist tools and then you have your focus and composition tools. So again, this is where like the focus peaking comes in and you can make the signal average or weak. And to make any adjustments like this, you just slide this little bar right here. So in the focus peaking, I can go from the weak, which is not gonna give, you know, too much in your image. If it's too distracting, you can go to average and then you can put it on strong. So some other options here are the grid lines, which you can put on the screen, which if you want to see, you know, like the rule of thirds, or if you just want where the center point is with a two by two look, you can do that. I usually like having the rule of thirds on so that you can see what's right in the center of the screen or you can frame somebody up on one of these lines right here. So for right now, I'm gonna close those out. All right, the next option is the LUT configuration. This is where you can go in and look at your customized LUTs that you put on here so that if you're you know, shooting in V-Log or anything like that, you can open that LUT to see what the exposure and what the settings and what the look looks like, which is a great feature to have because a lot of times shooting and viewing it in the log profile, sometimes that's kind of hard to nail focus or even you know just seeing what the image is gonna look like. All right, so the next setting is gonna be some of the display settings. So if you wanna change the aspect ratio, you can do that right in here. So the next option is going to be the system configuration. And this is where you can kind of, you know, test the battery levels, see where that's at, um, the color temperatures, that type of thing, make some of those adjustments. And another option that I really like about this monitor is you can set up these shortcuts here so that you have, you know, if you wanna to get to the false color real quick, you can do that and you can see what your false color settings are going to be but then you also have some of these other options like zebra the histogram and those exposure tools right here in that shortcut menu so to get out of this menu you just click it once and it's going to bring you back to the main screen and now this is kind of cool because it is a touch screen you're able to kind of change the brightness levels by just swiping up and down right here on the left side of the screen so if you need the monitor a little bit darker you can do that I found that keeping it on the brightest level because it's a 500 nit monitor is probably the best way to go, but that might also drain your battery a lot faster as well. Then right here on the other side, on the right side, if you bring it down, that actually is going to adjust your volume level. So if you're monitoring it, you know, with the monitor headphones right down here, you can adjust the volume level of that monitor. So another thing you're able to do because it is a touch screen is that you can actually zoom in and zoom out just by pinching with two fingers. So if you really wanna see what's in focus, you can, oh, there's my face, hello. But you can zoom in and make sure you're in focus in the areas you wanna be in focus. All right, so here are a few final thoughts that I have about the Moment M5. First of all, like I said, it's easy to use, it's budget friendly, and I love those things about this. It's gonna be really quick to set up as long as you have an HDMI port on your camera. Now, a couple things that I noticed while I was using it is on the GH5, I could not use the 4K60 option. Now, I could use 4K, 8-bit with a variable frame rate of 60, but I could not use the 4K 60. It did not register the signal on the M5. While I was shooting, I was using a high-speed HDMI cable, but I was not able to use the 4K 60 option. Another thing I noticed is that there is a little bit of a lag, but like I said, if you're a solo creator, that might not be a big deal because you're not gonna have anybody pulling focus for you. And then one of the other things I noticed is that, is this monitor bright enough for you? It's 500 nits, so it's not 
not gonna be super bright, might be a little hard to see when it's a super sunny day. I think the Moment M5 might be best in a studio situation like this where you have your camera and then maybe the monitor right down here. I don't know if it's gonna be the best monitor if you're doing a lot of outdoor shooting. I really like some of the accessories that come with the Moment M5, especially that little bag that you can pack everything into and slide right into your camera bag. Now, if you wanna check out more about the Moment M5, I do have an affiliate link down in the description. And anytime you use those affiliate links, they totally help out this channel, so I do appreciate that. Moment, I just wanna say thank you for sending me the M5. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, maybe stick around, watch one of these videos that's popping up on your screen right here. I'll catch you in the next video.